We're gonna take that away from the Spanish Empire. From the Esequibo River. Also para Pampoa. And we establish this as a foreign land, as a free land. And we had said to the government, you need to start a public relation campaign in Latin America and the Caribbean. Because a lot of people in the, those parts of the world didn't know about the arbitral war of The government had failed to do that. I say this face to face to the Guyanese president. You come here to vindicate a colonial dispossession. You come here without documents, without proof. You cannot have them. You are an heir of an empire that stole from a free country. And I come here to re reivindicate our right because that land cost this, the blood and tears of our liberators and it belongs to Venezuela, to no one else. If an elite parachuted and most recently the speaker parachuted into a conference overseas, wouldn't work. We said you have to restructure the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, ensure that you have competent staff that prepares documentation and information, and that they. There were also some that called to sabotage the referendum, like ExxonMobil, Guyana, and the far right elites, fascist elites from within our country welcome back to the flight hit that subscription button buddy and stay updated with everything that's trending in guyana and the diaspora thanks thumbs up thumbs up thumbs up thumbs up the video thumbs up the video and send this one out send this one out in the algorithm to all the guyanese all over the planet send this one out to all the like-minded persons all over the planet who refuse to see another country victimized, who refuse to see another country go into oppression. Share this video, thumbs up the video, and make sure all the persons that you know are Guyanese and like-minded that need to hear the conversation that Maduro is about to have, share it with them and make sure that it come up in the timeline. Like up the video, thumbs up the video. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let's have a comment about this. Let's have a very important conversation about this. We can't watch. Maduro playing around, you know. Maduro playing around. And you see how many supporters are there and cheering along with whatever he has to say and how many are supporting these claims that he's making. These claims are serious. The man said, look, Ali freaking for talk to me. And plus he name dropping all the other members that came out to the congression, to the meeting, to the sit down and talk, and let we work past this. We, we supposed to already know. When he can't look in your face, he got a different plan in his mind. He got an ulterior motive in his mind. He already had this up his sleeve all the time, allegedly. Since then, he already had a motive since then, allegedly. Now, if we're to really observe what's going on here, Maduro is saying, look, y'all historic document where you claiming is historic. We don't look at it and we don't honor it in the same way. The land is ours and we are coming and taking it. Freedom or death. Freedom or death. Maduro is getting very serious. I think he has always had this perspective in mind. I think he always held this within his heart. And he's now expressing and showing himself, showing the true colors. What will Guyana do? What are some of the solutions that our leaders have for us? We're going to hear right after Maduro, the madman Maduro, or is he really mad? Look, there's no question about the side that we're on. We, you could hear the accent, so you don't know what we're upon. They gave us a vision of a great homeland 
and they gave us the Guayana in its entirely because Bolivar left it for us in its totality. Our right over Guayana is a libertarian right in the face of colonial dispossession. We're going to take that away from the Spanish Empire, from the Esequibo River of the Parapampoa. And we establish this as a foreign land, as a free land. Is there anyone that could say that Venezuela independence was given for free, that it was given as a gift? What I'm telling you now, I have as witness my wife, Delcy, and all militaries that were with me. I say this face to face to the Guyanese president. You come here to vindicate a colonial dispossession. You come here without documents, without proof. You cannot have them. You are an heir of an empire that stole from a free country. And I come here to re reivindicate our right because that land cost the, the blood and tears of our liberators and it belongs to Venezuela, to no one else, Mr. President of Guyana. I can tell you that after being over six years and a half as a foreign minister, and now I have 11 as president. First, as president in charge, interim president, in accordance with the constitution. I was interim president first, where I did what I had to do. I called for elections, and then we won. 11 plus 6, 17 and a half years to see the things that I have seen to travel the world I know more than a hundred countries with Commander Chavez we made this we made part of this world we put Venezuela as a part of this world and I've seen the face to kings, popes, presidents prime ministers I had never felt so much satisfaction than to represent Venezuela face to face before the president of Guyana, which simply became the puppet of ExxonMobil and a puppet of the United Kingdom Empire and a puppet of the South Command of the US. I never felt so much pride of representing Venezuela. All this truth collected in this debate, all the truth approved by the people in the referendum. Our right is historical and also based in justice, based in truth. We do not pretend to take anything from no one. On the contrary, we pretend to rescue, to recover what genuinely belongs to Venezuela. President Jorge Rodriguez, deputy from Caracas. Rodriguez was saying that precisely we have here in this protocol room I know, I know, I know it's the elliptic Well, that's good, because at times you forget the name of something and then you're talking, Mr. President, from the National Electric Council, and no one says the name, because one can forget a name, right? I appreciate. The little blow to the ear in the best sense of the world, of the world. 
This is the elliptic hole, the protocol hole, by excellence of the Republic. But it's a masjid hole. Where is Josefa Joaquin? Where is Josefa Camejo? Where is Luisa? Where is Juana Ramirez? Where is Urimare? Where are the women? Where are the women that fought for the independence of Venezuela? In this hall. They are in you, women, present here today. They are in you, Beatriz Rodriguez. They are in you, Celita. Sorry for the comment, Mr. President, I apologize, but I know this belongs to the uh, from the time of Crespo and Guzman Blanco. This is a law that contains a group of elements very important. It comes from a referendum. Venezuela has lived its strange dictatorship of attacks from the United States. Every day we, re we receive attacks from within, from a far right faces that cannot, can, have never been able to do more damage to us, to this country, and we will never allow this. From abroad, we have the United States Empire. They constantly attack our country. A Venezuela is living in peace. It is recovering over time, recovering the economy. A country that is exercising its liberties and political sovereignties. With the December 3rd referendum, Dr. Elvis Amoroso, we read 30 elections in 25 years. With the elections that we have called for the July 28th, it will be the election number 31. What a weird dictatorship, what a weird regime, as they say before, because before they say the regime of Chavez, now they say the, Cha the Maduro regime. And the only regime I have is the important diet that I do, that I follow religiously. From these 30 elections, seven have been consultative referendum. The first one, April 25th, 1999, to talk with the people about the Constituent Assembly. Never before in the Republican history of Venezuela had this been consulted with the people. The second referendum, December 15, 1999, to consult the people on the Constitution, never before. Fathers, priests, pastors, presence here, leaders from the religious, from the Catholic religion, Muslim leaders, never before in the Republican history are the whole people we call to, to go over the Constitution. And that's what it was done on December 15, 1999. The third referendum, December 10th, no, December 3rd of the year 2000, the famous union referendum to promote the transformation in the union Greetings to all the union leaders here present today. 
The fourth referendum was made in spite of realities in the infamous signatures that were repeated and that fourth referendum was the first referendum that was made as an obligatory one for the first time in the history of humanity. An incredible dictatorship, U.S. Empire. An incredible dictatorship, oligarchy of the far-right elites. Racist and uninclusive. The fifth referendum, December the 2nd, 2007, to consult on a text, very beautiful text, very ambitious, with great changes for the country and reforms of the constitution of the constitution of the republic. Because it's put there that not a single comma can be changed from this book without consulting the people of the country, and that's why it was done this referendum in the year 2007. Sixth referendum, February 25th, 2009. Sorry, February 15th. The sixth referendum. To add an, an amendment, a constitution amendment, and establish the continuous and sovereign election to all public office by popular vote. Approved by over 54% of the votes with, after an intense debate and the seventh referendum of our history. And I will say the big daddies of all referendums. The referendum of referendums, December 3rd, 2023, when the people voted five times yes for their historical rights over the Guayana Esequiba, the Guayana of the Liberators. We have different unprecedented events. We took for the first time the debate on the Guayana Esequiba to a referendum going all, all, all the opinions, all the debates. There were some that called to vote yes for three questions or, or for two, and others that called to vote yes for all five questions. There were some that called to not, go, not vote. A natural way to stay ready, baby, because I'm ready for you, Mr. C. There were also some that called to sabotage the referendum, like ExxonMobil, Guyana, and the far-right elites, fascist elites from within our country. The Honorable Aubrey Norton is going to give us some of his perspectives, some of the ways that he's prescribing that we as Guyanese should be handling this situation. He's saying, yo, you can't just jump in, in to the situation just like that and think everything is going to solve. You got to move with protocol. You got to let your lower ranking persons reach with their lower ranking persons and move up the line with the information. You can't just go to the top, boom, you want to keep a meeting and everybody coming together from everybody in the team. You got to move strategic. This is what Norton is saying, and we can hear that right now. Let's get into the conversation. Let's hear it directly from the mouth of the opposition leader. You know, on the foot, what can we do while we while we await the bigger outcome of this man? What do you advise that we as locals we have given a plethora of advice to the government? Among them, we had said to the government, you need to start a public relation campaign in Latin America in the time. 
because a lot of people in the, those parts of the world didn't know about the arbitral award of the The government had failed to do that. We accept to the government that you need to have a more proactive approach in terms of dealing with border communities and SPO in general. And Guyana, they have failed to do that. Apart from producing some handbills that says Escobar is our own, which none is wrong, they did nothing more. And so we kept outlining to them. We have said to them parachute diplomacy doesn't work. They're finally parachuting, and most recently, the speaker parachuting into a conference overseas wouldn't work. We said you have to restructure the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, ensure that you have competent staff that prepares documentation and information, and that they engage their diplomatic counterparts, uh, having worked out clearly where you're going in terms of your diplomatic strategy, so that by the time you arrive at the heads and the ministers, etc., you would have had a clear work of diplomatic approach. The government has failed to do that. There is no consistent organized education of the people of Guyana. After Argyle, I sense Irfan Ali decided that all is good and well. I think he misses the importance of a proactive diplomatic effort as well as a proactive PR effort. You know, the PPP is so bent on falsifying information that PR for them seems only to be the falsified information they put up. Public relations also involves educating your populace to achieve the objectives you want to achieve. The most critical, one of the most critical is education of the population engagement of the international community and ensuring the appropriate actions are taken as it relates to border community. A natural way to stay ready, baby, because I'm ready for you, Mr. C. Is government aware of one of his senior police ranks um, on his way back from training in India? being pulled in by the FBI in the United States of America? Yes, we, um, we saw that in the media.